Welcome back to Black News Tonight. The racial wealth gap between white and black households in the United States is widening. A 2019 Fed survey of consumer finances revealed that white families' medium net worth is nearly $189,000. Meanwhile, black families have less than 15% of that, roughly $24,000. Reports suggest that the pandemic is only going to make the disparity worse. Joining me now to discuss this and much more is Stephen S. Rogers. He's the author of A Letter to My White Friends and Colleagues. He's also a retired Harvard Business School professor. Stephen, my brother, it's good to see you. Uh, in your new book, A Letter to My White Friends and Colleagues, you investigate and, and really brilliantly lay out some of the root causes of racial wealth disparities in America. Can you talk a little bit about uh, what those systems are, uh, particularly the ones that are responsible for perpetuating this inequality? First of all, let me thank you very much, Mark, for having me tonight. It's my sincere pleasure. Um, in the book, I have this disparity. And the theme of all of that, though, is that, and I'll give those three reasons, but the theme of it all, Mark, is that the federal government and state government, governments of the United States intentionally did everything that they could to um, enrich white people while at the same time intentionally impoverishing black people. So what we see is the reason for that wealth gap that you just cited is three reasons primarily. One is that two weeks of slavery, where for 12 generations, black people got did not get the chance to do any transference of wealth. And that whole absence of transference of wealth was beautifully described by an activist who said, it was like for 246 years, black people played the game of monopoly with white people. And every time the black person won, the black person had to give the white person their winnings. And that's what happened to us. And as a result of that, um, 246 of no wealth being transferred, we're a poor race. Over 35% of our the black community has zero net worth. And one economist cited the fact that if you stop white wealth gaining right now, that it would take over 225 years for black people, if they were gaining wealth at the rate that they're doing now, to catch up to white people. And that 225 years, interestingly, wow. is very close to that 265 years. The second reason why we are poor people, again, under the heading of it was done to us intentionally by the settlements, was what's called black codes. Following the Emancipation Proclamation, Mark, as you well know, in 1865, states were fearful of losing black labor. In essence, they were fearful of losing that zero um, expense item on their income statement for labor uh, that they had under slavery. So what they did was they created another system. And the black codes were codes designed to, again, penalize black people, impoverish black people while enriching white people. So the black codes uh, specifically said, for example, well, part of the black codes was the vagrancy laws. And vagrancy laws said that black people after slavery, black people were required to have contracts showing that they were employed, typically by one of their former owners. If they did not have a contract, a labor contract, and the contract had to be approved by a judge, if they did not have such a, a contract, then they were in violation of vagrancy laws. They were other, also in violation of vagrancy laws by other means, just by the discretion of the uh, people in charge of the government at that time. So with those vagrancy laws violations, black people, uh, Mark, were arrested and actually forced to do hard labor. And the labor that they were doing was uh, to the benefit, again, of, of whites, because that labor was being paid for by companies like the railroad and private companies. They were paying for this very inexpensive labor that went to the government. Blacks got, did not get any of the labor. Which but builds up the wealth the of, of, of the... Right, which builds up the wealth of, of their white counterparts. It's an interesting point you make here, and, I, and we're, we're, we're running out of time, but I wanted to talk about this other okay. point you raised, which is, and I'm, I'm looking at your book here, you said we were able to reduce 75% of our problems in the country if we closed the wealth gap. That's a provocative statement. We could, What kind of problems are you talking about? Well, I believe that uh, most of our problems as a black people is rooted in, the, in, in poverty, that... Um, Poor people are over-policed, poor people have horrible health care, and the absence of any kind of, of, of 
livable income uh, has resulted in us being penalized in the way that we're being penalized. And once we get to the point where we're on an equal setting with our white uh, brothers and sisters relative to uh, net worth, and my advocate, I am advocating that blacks be uh, given a check for $153,000 as part of reparations, just like the federal government of the United States gave Japanese reparations of $20,000, and they gave slave owners $300 per slave as reparations when slavery was ended, that I believe black people should be given that delta, that difference between white net worth and black net worth. And the result of that will solve a lot of our problems. It won't eliminate 100% of it, but it will solve a lot of our problems if black people are brought up to the like, level of wealth and net worth as whites. I like that reparations talk, man. $156,000 check. I think that would help close the gap. Reparations is about repairing the damage done. And as you lay out in your wonderful book, there's been a whole lot of damage done that deals with this question of wealth, not income, y'all, but wealth, not just what you make on your salary, but transfer of property, savings, insurance, all the stuff that allows people who even make the same income to have much better and stronger and more uh, prosperous outcomes in life. Anyway, Stephen, thank you so much for joining me today. And everybody, make sure you check out the new book. It's called A Letter to My White Friends and Colleagues, What You Can Do Right Now to Help the Black Community. Oh my God, it'll be released on May Mark, 25th. Mark, thank you very much. I appreciate it.